Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to have a look at a collaboration beer and I think this one will be really quite interesting on a few counts. So this one is half Japanese and half Taiwanese. I've reviewed both of these breweries for you on the channel before. Both breweries are also run by women which is you know quite unusual in the brewing world anyway but in Asia even more so and the beer itself is I think a really interesting one as well. So for the Japanese side of things we're going to go to Mino Beer who are from here in Osaka just a little bit to the north of the city in the Mino suburb I guess you could say or the Mino ward and we're having a look at a collaboration beer that they've done with Taihu Brewing who come from Taipei over in Taiwan. This one is called the Mugen Stout and it comes in at 1% ABV. So um, yeah a really kind of interesting beer this one. I'm really curious to see how this one turns out actually and like I say both of the breweries involved here are run by women so I think that's pretty special actually but I don't think I've ever reviewed a stout for you on the channel that is this low in EBV so I'm really curious to see how this turns out because you know potentially there is a big market for um, low alcohol beers that are fully flavoured actually and both of these breweries in my experience are very very capable I mean I've got a lot more experience with Mino beer who are of course known for their Imperial Stout and the Regular Stout. Both of those beers are the most decorated beers from that brewery. Taihu Brewing, I reviewed their Long Island Iced Beer. Um, I think that was back in the summer just after I came back from Hong Kong, which was a, that was a really, really interesting beer actually. And I want to review more of their kind of straight up beers at some point as well, some stouts and some IPAs. But you know, two very well regarded breweries in Asia these days. Um, you know, Mino Beer have been around for a good bit longer than Taihu have. But, you know, the Taiwanese craft beer scene is starting to grow as well. The whole craft beer scene in Asia is starting to take off a little bit now. So really curious to see how this one turns out. And I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer. Let's see how we get on. So this is yet another one that was bought at liquor shop Asakiya in Taishibashi Amaichi here in Osaka. Koji and Rika run the shop and they've got a great selection of Japanese beers as well as, you know, German, American and some Belgian things as well. So make sure you check out the link to their Facebook page in the description below. Pretty much any any of the beers that you find on the channel that are Japanese are bought from there and I really recommend you go and check the shop out if you find yourself in, uh, in Osaka. I really a kind of treasure trove of different beers actually I have to say there's a lot of stuff there even from Europe that you that I've never seen before so definitely go and check it out so um, yeah let's get on with the review then as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website it's the link to my other reviews that I've done both from Mino Beer and from Taihu Brewing and um, you know I will add more to both of those lists at some point in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media media down there as well. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you, and I will make one for the Taiwanese beers, and hopefully I can add to that at some point fairly soon. I've only This is only the second Taiwanese beer, or third Taiwanese beer, that I'm reviewing for you on the channel, if many serves correctly but hopefully more to come in the future because I know there's many good breweries down there now and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Mino Beer first off then since these guys are the home brewery so Mino Beer as the name suggests are from Mino in Osaka which is about 15 kilometers to the north of the main city. This area of Osaka is really well known for the Meiji no Mori a quasi par a national park which is one of the oldest in Japan and also for the Katsuoji Buddhist temple which is over 1200 years old and I do recommend you go and check these the, the park out and the temple it's a really beautiful area actually you know Osaka is mainly a kind of concrete jungle to be honest with you but Mino is very very beautiful and you'll get some really nice beers up there as well but the monkey symbol that the brewery uses you can see it on my nice Mino glass here and um, this is basically a reference to the monkey population which you'll find in the national park 
and you'll see them kind of swinging around. They're quite funny and quite mischievous actually. But onto the brewery itself then. So the Mino Brewery was established back in 1996 and it's owned by the Oshita family who'd run an alcohol shop for about 30 years before they started brewing beer. So apparently the family went for dinner one night and on the way home Papa Oshita pointed to a building and then told his daughters this is where they're going to be brewing beer. So he bought a brew kit from New Zealand and he had rented out the building and he was planning to start up his own brewery. But the brewery is now run by the family's three daughters. Uh, Kauri and Mayuko founded the brewery. Uh, and their younger sister has joined them since as well. Kauri is the eldest sister and she's the head brewer. She's apparently a little bit of a perfectionist but a very talented brewer. She likes to you know, t uh, tinker with her recipes a lot of time and just get more flavour out of them and stuff. But she had trained initially at a brewery in Kobe before actually going to the National Research Institute of Brewing, the RNIB in East Hiroshima. And Kauri says that she actually learned a lot on the job and you know, she, as I say, constantly tweaking her recipes and she also credits Nakanishi of East Isakadoya as a great mentor. He was quite instrumental in helping um, Isakadoya get off the ground and along with um, Papa Oshita as well. Um, but the brewery apparently had an uphill struggle when they started because many of the little Jibiru breweries you know, were going bust in the late 90s. The alcohol laws were relaxed around you know, 1996, 1997. So that's why so many of these breweries opened. Um, but a lot of them didn't last very long. And public opinion of Jibir, local beer, wasn't very great. But Mino have gone on to become one of the most decorated Japanese craft breweries. And uh, the brewery also run the Beer Belly pubs in Osaka these days as well. If you go up to Mino, you'll also find the Mino Beer Warehouse, which is definitely worth a visit. As I said to you, um, I've also I've filmed. I was going. I was. I think I told you in the last video that I was going to film a little out and about video there, but I have now filmed that and I'll edit it together and put that up on the channel at some point fairly soon as well. So if you get the chance, definitely go up there and check out some of the uh, the Mino beers. It's a lovely little place. You can walk up to the uh, the waterfall and things like that and you've got a lovely little brewery to walk to after you, you make your way back out of the National Park. But yeah, a really cool brewery, this one. Very well known for their um, for their Imperial Stout, of course. That was the first beer I think I tried from them. Um, and they've also got the WIPA and a few other things in there as well, which are you know, definitely worth checking out, actually. So they're starting to get a little bit more adventurous, I've noticed. There's more and more experimental beers coming out from these guys, but they do have a very solid kind of a core range of beers as well and they're collaborating a little bit more so hopefully that gets the Mino name out there a little bit more but probably the best known Osaka craft brewery at the moment as of December 2019 when I'm filming this review for you. But yeah that's all you really need to know about Mino beer for the moment. If you want to learn more of course you can check out the brewery website, follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that and you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages for this brewery as well. So anyway on to the Taiwanese side of things then and Taihu Brewing. And this is only my second review from these guys. I think it's about seven or eight beers that I've reviewed from Mino so far. But as I told you earlier, Taihu Brewing are based in Taipei and they were founded back in 2013 by a group of five craft beer loving friends. So three of the founders are Taiwanese American. This is Duke Wu, Peter Huang, and Rob Babbage and all of the five friends apparently met at school and were big fans of the of the you know the whole craft beer scene if you like and they saw a trend really starting to take off in Asia and they wanted to really be a part of that and go back to their their kind of uh, country of heritage or whatever you want to call it but for a long time the Taiwanese beer market was dominated by Taiwan beer which is a state-run monopoly but the alcohol industry started to open up to the public in 2002 and uh, this was after Taiwan joined the World Trade Organization this is a pretty common pattern throughout Asia actually you see the same thing in Hong Kong you see it in um, you see it in South Korea and you have seen it in Japan as well. I think after one country did it, all of them seem to do it. So that just seems to be how it goes over here. But apparently it was prohibited in, it's prohibited in Taiwan for a brewery to open up in an officially non-commercial space. And this means that most of the craft breweries have the problem of being located quite far away from people. So it's difficult for them to open up tap rooms and things like this. So the head brewer at Taihu is Winnie Su Jo Wei, if I've pronounced that correctly. I apologise for any bad Chinese pronunciation in this video but she came from a background in studying agriculture and economics and she worked as a bartender at Gordon Beers which is an American chain restaurant in Taipei and in 2007 they sent her to the US to study brewing with the idea that she would brew the beers for the company but after four years Winnie left the job in 2011 to study for her international brewer certificate in Berlin and this was where she befriended Lan Shi Fu who was sponsored by Le Blade Or to do um, one of the other things and those two companies Gordon Beers and 
the Blade d'Or, where um, you know they are probably the two first sort of craft breweries, if you like, in Taiwan. I have visited Le Blade d'Or, and you see, and a couple of years ago, that would have been 2015. I reviewed their honey lager for you on the channel. But after this, she went on to be the head of operations and research and development, and she spent two years in that job. But apparently, she didn't enjoy working in the business side of things, and so um, you know she was looking to get back into brewing again, and she travelled to the US before returning to Taiwan. Upon her return to Taiwan, she met the partners and was aware of what their plans were and they invited her to come on board and she joined the Taihu company in May of 2015. Today though she runs a brew team of around 14 people, 10 of whom are women, and they've got their main brewery in Jinji in New Taipei, which if I remember correctly is a little bit north of the old city of Taipei, if you can say that. But they opened their first beer bar, which is called Cho uh, Yinshi, and this is in the eastern district of Taipei. And they apparently didn't signpost the tap room, and they made sure that it had no English notifications so that it would entice local customers to come in. And they've had great success with this as well. And initially they only served international craft beers, but then they started selling their own around 2015 as well. But as of July 2019 when I made these notes and um, they've produced around 150 different types of beer I think it's still um, around the same at the moment and they've got five tap rooms around Taipei this is the Chuo Yin Shi Dan the Taihu Airstream, the Cho Yinshi Landmark, the Taihu Lab, which is their research and development branch, and also the Driftwood Bar as well. And they're apparently thinking to expand and open a tap room in Tokyo at one point as well. And they're ex looking to expand into mainland China, and they're also looking to enter and export some niche markets in the US, such as like San Francisco, New York, and uh, Los Angeles and stuff like this. But the name of the brewery, Taihu, it comes from two things. So Thai is obviously a reference to Taiwan. So there's a lot of the cities in uh, Taiwan are named after different things. You've got like Thai N, which is literally like East Taiwan, if I remember correctly. You've got um, oh, what's I, I even forget some of the names of the other ones. You've got like Tai Chung, which if I remember correctly is like Center Taiwan or West Taiwan or South Taiwan, something like that. So yeah, the Thai comes from Taiwan, and Hu means tiger. So literally, this is the name of this brewery is the Taiwan Tiger Brewing Company, and perhaps that's a reference to the um, you know the fact that Taiwan was one of the Asian tiger economies, along with likes of Singapore and Hong Kong and stuff like this. So um, yeah, interesting brewery this one. The t the tiger, of course, is the symbol of this brewery, and normally you'll find it under. Um, a canopy of hops on the different Taihu beers. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Taihu brewing for the moment. Really cool to come across a Taiwanese brewery, especially one with a woman as the head brewer. That's pretty cool. And women too tend to make pretty good brewers, in my experience. There's some uh, Swedish female brewers as well that are very talented. So um, yeah, definitely cool to return to these guys and also to find them collaborating with uh, my sort of local brewery in Osaka, if you like, because I'm over here fairly regularly from Sweden, of course. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. As I said before with Mino, the Taihu Brewing website's in the video description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different things that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is a 1% stout and it's called the Mugen Stout. So um, Mugen, or muggin, I'm not sure how exactly you should pronounce it, but that is basically this little sign here. And if you're, you know, if you're a physicist or a chemist like I have been, you know, you'll know that sign means infinite. So muggin is literally infinite. So this, the name of this beer is essentially the infinite stout. But it's a one percent stout beer, and uh, it was brewed, I think. I'm sure I read that it was August that this one was actually, um, it was brewed in. You know, they did a sort of, uh, Taihu came over and did a tap takeover at one of the beer belly pubs here in, um, in Osaka, I don't know which one exactly, um, and I think Mino Beer are planning to do the same over in uh, in Taiwan at some point soon, either that or they've done it already. So yeah, a really nice little collaboration. When I do need to get back to Taiwan actually and get a few of the uh, the local craft beers to review for you because you know the scene has taken off since I was there back in 2015 and I have to go and see my friend Crazy G as well, Crazy Geneva, who was, uh, who was pretty awesome. So yeah, as you can see there, Really nicely presented beer. This one you can see the monkey being cheeky and sitting on top of the tiger, and uh, you will find the monkey on the bottle cap of this one as well because it is, um, you know, Mino are the home brewery in this one. So um, yeah, really cool. And you can see there is the the Chinese characters down there for um, Taihu Brewing, and of course in Taiwan, if I remember correctly, they still use the traditional 
Chinese. The um, you know they haven't simplified their characters and things like that. So um, yeah, quite cool this one. So let's get it out and get on with the tasting. Then I'm curious to see how this one turns out. So yeah, as you can see, a little bit of smoke on the opening there, and we'll get it out and into the glass. I'm really curious to see what this one tastes like actually, and especially at one percent, because you know there is a big market for these kind of beers. Look at the head on that actually. And there you can see my glass is clean because the carbonation is sticking towards the side of the glass there. But um, yeah, quite surprised actually at how much carbonation and how much head this one has for a 1% beer. Um, so yeah, that looks pretty nice. You can see there is a little bit of condensation around the edge of the glass there. Let's just see if we can get rid of a little bit of that so you can see the colour properly. But um, yeah, if I hold this one up to the light, this is a really, really dark looking beer. It's, you know, a very dark sort of ebony rosewood kind of colour. You can see that there was a solid, I think it was about, you know, was that about two fingers? It must have been not far off two fingers of a frothy, I would say medium beige head on this one. It's a little bit bumpy, but you know, you can see there's some smaller bubbles kind of sticking in there. There's a few little bubbles heading up towards the bottom of that head there. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones, you know, just kind of floating around in there. But in terms of a stout beer, nothing overly surprising about this one actually. There's one or two little bits of sediment in the bottom of it there, but you know, when it's a um, you know, a bottle conditioned beer, you're always going to get a little bit of that. It's always natural, of course, so there's nothing to worry about there. But in terms of colour, you know, I have to admit I'm impressed with how dark this one is because normally, you know, the, the higher the alcohol, the more pitch black a stout beer will get. This one doesn't even have like a kind of Coca-Cola or chestnutty coloured edge to it, actually. That's pretty impressive for a 1% stout beer, actually. So, um, yeah, we need to see how we get on because normally one of the things to point out about low alcohol beers. I've always said that instead of having a non-alcohol beer, you're better to have a low alcohol beer because then you can still do the natural fermentation process. Most breweries that have zero alcohol beers boil the alcohol out of it and that destroys a lot of the sugars and the hoppy components of the beer. So, you know, quite often non-alcohol beers taste a bit like shit, so you're better to go and have a very low alcohol beer. So, keep that in mind. But yeah, impressed with how dark this beer is because normally you would expect the um, you know, to, for, for it to be this dark, you would expect it to be quite high in its alcohol content, of course. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at that aroma then and see how we get on. Ah, yeah. So, the aroma of this one is quite roasty and toasty. Um, and that's a kind of reflection of the original stout and the imperial stout from Mino Beer. So, it's quite cool that they've decided to take this in another direction and take the alcohol of it down, actually. So, um, yeah, some lovely roasty toasty notes in this. It's not... I do wonder if there's a bit of carafe malt in here. There's something in this aroma that's really telling me that this is like German carafe malt. It's got a lovely woodiness to it as well. Um, it really The aroma that you get out of this one really reminds me of like a well-fired bread crust. If you think of like a hedgehog bread roll, um, you know, from the German bakeries, of course. I always talk about German bakeries with these beers. Um, you know, it... The aroma that comes out of this really reminds me of like a well-fired um, toasty bread crust. And there is just a little bit of that kind of smoothness to it. And that's what really makes me think that it's carafe malt, which incidentally comes from Weirmann in, uh, in Bamberg in Germany. Um, definitely a place you need to go and visit as well. I have been there. So, um, yeah, that's a lovely aroma, actually. There's a wee bit of a brown sugary note to this one. There is a little touch of caramel to it, some biscuity sweetness as well. But that's it's quite subtle, to be honest with you. Um, lovely kind of woody undertones, like I said, some toasty black malts, definitely a little bit of a smoother, well-fired kind of bread crust to this one as well. And um, yeah, you know, it's it's a really quite, it's a, you know, for a 1% stout, the aroma on this beer is pretty damn impressive, actually. A lot of breweries have tried very low alcohol IPAs and stuff. Not many of them have tried a low alcohol stout, and maybe that's one of the reasons that they did this, actually. So, um... Yeah, that's really impressive actually, you know, thumbs up to uh, both Mino and Taihu for even thinking to do something like this. A bit pioneering there. So, um, yeah, that's really, really nice. Um, on the hoppy side of things, it's a little bit earthy. 
which is what you'd expect. There's some nice, there is a nice little bit of a grassiness to this beer. There's a wee touch of floral note to it, but mainly the green side of things is grassy, but a little bit earthy as well. And on the fruity end of the spectrum, you know, there's maybe just a little tiny hint of like that kind of typical figgy or black currenty type aroma that you can get from some of these, pardon me, from some of these beers. But there is something about this beer it is really just very, very smooth. Like I say, I suspect a bit of carafa in here. It's almost got the coffee-like smoothness that you expect, but it's not quite the same as uh, as coffee. That's one of the great things about carafa malt, actually. So, um, yeah, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of it before you get stuck in. But let's have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the Mugen Stout coming in at 1% ABV from Mino Beer in Mino here in Osaka in Japan in collaboration with Taihu Brewing from Taipei over in Taiwan. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull, Kampai, Gambe. That's really interesting, actually. It's a very, very crisp beer, actually. And it's the flavour of this really comes out in the aftertaste. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things. This beer... It almost, in some ways... It almost reminds me of like a Schwarz beer, or a Czech Tmavi, as they would call it. It's, um, you know, it definitely has that slightly thicker ale kind of mouthfeel to it, but the flavours in this one are really quite similar to, you know, like Kostritzer, or uh, or something like that, or the dark um, Kozil, or something like that that you'll get from the Czech Republic. Um, it's really, it has that level of Christmas to it, actually. It is a little bit more akin to a Schwarz beer, this rather than anything else, but um, it the flavours kind of linger around around a little bit more. So that kind of makes you think maybe it's more of a, a sort of stout. It's not quite as um, it's got the crispness you'd expect of a Schwarz beer, but it's got a little bit of the kind of lingering flavour you'd expect more, like an ale, like a stout or something like that. Maybe it maybe comes across as more of a kind of porter, to be honest with you, in some ways as well. That's another way to look at it. So yeah, you know, I'd be really interested just to know exactly how they had um, how they'd done this one. But it's you know, it is it, it's it's a solid beer actually. If you consider it as more of a porter um, or a Schwarz beer or Tmavi or something like that, it comes across pretty well actually. I mean, the whole this whole beer for me is about the aftertaste. Um, and it really that's when you start to get most of the flavour at this one. When the beer is actually on your palate, it's very light. And, you know, very crisp and drinkable. That's the first impression, uh, that, or the main impression, I should say, that I have of this one, and I like that about it. So let's just try and break this flavour down a little bit then. So in the middle of your palate, you get that nice kind of toasty, roasty black malt. That blankets the middle of your palate. But the further you go into the aftertaste, you'll feel it smoothing out a little bit, and that's what makes me think there's a bit of, you know, Vireman Carafa in here. That, um, you know, it does start to become more like a kind of well-fired bread crust in the middle of your palate actually, which is, is is really nice. So yeah, um, I was picking up some of the brown sugary notes coming out of this. There's a teeny little bit of it in the very centre of your palate, but it really is very, very minimal. You've got to search for it quite a bit. So mainly it's a kind of um, toasty, roasty toasty and kind of um, carafe -y type malt that's lingering here in the middle of your palate. It does actually get quite dry the further you go into the aftertaste as well. Um, but yeah, it's quite a straight up malt base, this one. It's very kind of to the point, if that makes sense. Um, in the back corners of the palate then, you've got a nice little bit of a kind of darker earthiness to this beer. And that smooths out as you come further forward along the sides of the palate. Um, you know, you do get a little touch of a floral quality on the front corners of the tongue and then around the very front curve of the palate it's just that little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy in my opinion. And if you go behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble 
where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. I'd be curious to know what hops they've used in this. It could be like um, Bramling's Cross, I think. Um, in some ways this beer really comes across as more of a kind of... Um, it, it reminds me a lot of the robust porters, to be honest with you. It's quite a... Um, it's got the drinkability of a porter and uh, you know it's got the kind of roasty toasty notes that you'd expect of that actually I don't I, I can't remember how you know I thought it was always the different yeast strains and things like that that they used uh, that was the main difference between a porter and a stout. A porter is very light and the stout is thicker and it's the different yeast strains that they use for them. This beer is definitely a bit more like a porter in my opinion in terms of its, its flavour profile and stuff um, and it's the crispness that really gives you that as well. It's definitely got some of that sort of Schwarzbier Tamavi type crispness to it. But yeah, when you take this beer in, you'll feel the carbonation towards the front of your tongue right away. And then it, it's whipped away quite quickly. And then you get those roasty, toasty elements just kind of sitting there as well, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I like how, um, I really like how the flavour in this goes together. I mean, by no means is this the most adventurous beer that you're going to get from Mino. I mean, if you compare this to the Stout and the Imperial Stout, those are quite, um, you know, those are, you know, really quite full flavour ale type beers. This one's definitely a more kind of light, sessionable beer, this actually. But I do think they're onto something with it. I think they've pulled this off quite nicely. And I dare say that this probably isn't the most adventurous beer that you're going to find from Taihu Brewing either. I think this is one that they've brewed you know, to kind of teach each other a little bit and, you know, to try and, uh, you know, be experimental. And I think it's it's one of these kind of novelty beers in that sense, actually. So, you know, kudos, as I say, kudos to both of them for thinking to do something like this. I can't think of any other breweries who have brewed, you know, very low alcohol stouts, but they've, they've pulled it off, you know, fairly nicely, actually. If they can get the, the body of this one up a little bit and make it just feel a little bit thicker, I think they've done a you know, they'll have they'll pulled off something pretty good here. But it's understandable that they did the stout because obviously Mino have particular expertise in that area and they're very well regarded in that particular style. So yeah, this is, as I say, this is a beer that's not going to kind of blow the head off you in any sense if you're a big craft beer nerd like me, but it's more, a, it's a kind of novelty thing and it's quite cool that they can pull it off in a sense. And I think, you know, they've done fairly well, but it really does, stylistically, it really does remind more of a kind of porter or even a, Tamavi or a Schwarzbier or something like that. But still in terms of its flavour profile, it has what you would expect. It's really the aftertaste where you start to get some of these things. You'll also notice a little touch of a woody note. If you go to the front corners of your palate and then move in a little bit, you'll also get a little touch of a woody note coming out of this one the further you go into the aftertaste as well. So yeah, let's move on to the mouthfeel then. So. This beer is very light and very crisp. As I said, I would say that this is a, a, a light-bodied beer. Carbonation really is quite crisp. You could kind of see that with the amount of head that came out of this one. Perhaps that's one of the things that's making it feel a bit lighter than it is. Maybe the, the bottle conditioning could have been a little bit better with this, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, there is a, a, a high degree of crispness to this one. The carbonation was pretty active in this beer, and I would say that overall the mouthfeel is generally quite crisp and quite wet with this beer. So um, the malt base then is quite roasty and toasty and it's not the thickest of malt bases you're going to come across but you would expect that, pardon me, especially when it's a 1% beer because your alcohol comes from the malt sugars and so on. Um, in terms of the bitter side of things, there is a little bit of a hoppy presence to this one. I would think that this one's maybe around 50 or even 60 IBUs or something like that. It does have a good chunk of um, of IBU to it. This beer it could even be a little bit higher than that, maybe even pushing 70. You've got a bit of the, the roasty earthiness in there, some of the floral notes, and also that kind of roasty toasty quality in the middle of your palate as well but you've also got just a little touch of a fruity note there the the kind of fruity side of this beer it's just a little bit sort of um, black currant here and um, blackberry-ish and you get that it kind of lingers there into the aftertaste a little bit it's definitely not figgy it's not um, that type of flavour it is just a little bit more kind of black currant-y and, and things like that but that's very very minimal just on the very tip of the palate and you will get uh, just a little touch of that in the, uh, in the, you know, when you take the beer in as well. Like I say, I do suspect that it's perhaps Bramling's Cross that's been used in this one. Quite a popular hop when it comes to uh, 
you know, barley English barley wines actually. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're using it in the stout as well, along perhaps with the way that the earthiness comes out in this one really makes me wonder if they're using something like Fugo as well actually. It's got that almost kind of ashy type quality to it in the, the flavour as well. So there are some English elements to this beer I would say as well. If you like a kind of robust English porter, I think this is one that's going to uh, suit you down to the ground. So yeah, if the carbonation, um, I think maybe the bottling condition wasn't the best with this particular bottle, um, but you know, they've pulled off something I think that is pretty cool from a novelty type perspective. So you know, hats off to, uh, to Mino Beer and Taihu Brewing for this one. It's an interesting beer, not the most adventurous I suspect that you're going to find from either brewery, but definitely um, pretty damn cool actually. I've never heard of a 1% stout before and it's it's got enough flavour to kind of satisfy you I would say as well. So um, yeah, let's just leave it at that for this one. This one is the Mugen Stout, a 1% stout beer from uh, Mino Beer here in Osaka brewed in collaboration with Taihu Brewing over in Taipei and Taiwan. Awesome to return to Taihu of course and cool to try another kind of novelty, interesting type beer from Mino Beer as well. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Mino Beer and from Taihu Brewing. If you're watching in Taiwan, do please give me some brewery recommendations and stuff. I definitely want to get back there at some point soon and you know try some of the beers because I know the scene has exploded a little bit since I was there back in 2015. Um, and you know I want to try those beers. But thank you again for watching my reviews. Please check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon. An interesting beer to review uh, from two very good breweries run by women here in Asia. So um, yeah until the next time, Slanja, Skull, Kampai, Gambe, thank you for watching. Cheers. Make sure you check out Taihu and Mino Beer.